Like, I never thought I'd hear the words lol, dank, or memes. Like, in years. It's been years since I heard some of those words. But I hear that dude say something like, my dank trench coat. And that took me aback so much, and I, st I couldn't stop laughing. Hi, welcome to the podcast. I'm Nicole, your player one. And I'm Joyce one, your player two. Today, Indie House, we've got Murder Side 2017 by Power Hoof. It's a point and click mystery game. A uh, short premise of the game is play as post-millennial investigator John Murphy as you point and click your way through a soft-boiled cyberpunk detective story. And it's available on Itch.io for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And it's name your own price. It took me about 35 minutes to play, a little less. Uh, it is pretty easy, super simple. You just click things. Yeah, it took me even less time. I took about 20 minutes, and that's even with how much I interacted with everything. It's just that since it's a point and click, there's really not much difficult gameplay. And as for the puzzles you encounter, they're also pretty easy too. Yeah, I, I had like a little bit of trouble like trying to find things, but like other than that, it was really, really simple. And even uh, when I was having like trouble finding things, it was fun because I was able to just like learn new things about the detective. Yeah, and all of the scenes, you can basically interact with like everything. And everything that you interact with comes with some funny and or dramatic commentary. And when I say dramatic, I mean funny, but the voice is dramatic. Kind of like a film noir detective. I liked how the um, voice of like the narrator wasn't the same as the detective's voice, even though it, like the narrator seemed like it was the detective. Like the voices were different though. It's really funny to me. Oh yeah, that's def the narrator is definitely the detective's inner monologue. And I, I'm pretty sure that's just how he sees himself. And it's such a funny contrast to his actual voice. Because to be quite honest, Detective Murphy's actual voice is pretty goofy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's great is that the things they say, like the way that Detective Murphy and the narrator, his inner dialogue, both speak, the sentences are both equally goofy and stupid. But the way that the voices change, it really adds a different feel to what you're hearing. Yeah, I enjoyed all of the voices. I thought they were all really good and they all fit the characters. Uh, I, th I just really enjoyed that the voices were different for, for Murphy. I also really like the voice acting of Detective Juice and Detective Stent. For one, I thought that Juice had a funny accent and I liked his dialogue regarding the jokes surrounding his own last name. And I like how Stent's voice, along with the narrator's voice, really helped to add to the detective noir vibe that the soundtrack of the game was already giving. Yeah, really enjoyed the music. Uh, it was really cool, and it helped with the vibe, like you said. I enjoyed the like film noir. It was kind of like cyberpunk-ish vibe. It was really cool. I enjoyed it. I like how well the uh, music worked with the visuals of the game. Not only did the music add a film noir vibe, but the visuals were also quite dark and slightly monotone, which actually helps the characters themselves stand out more against the background. The environments had a high amount of detail in them, hence why there's just so much character in all the scenes, especially in Detective Murphy's office. And the game doesn't shy away from gore, which adds to the sheer coolness of the game's vibe and the, the slight edginess of it too, especially with the film noir vibe that we've been talking about. And I, I, I like you said, it's like really detailed and there's a lot going on. And I, I enjoyed that it was like pixelated and it was, it was just really cool. It was a really cool vibe. And the, with the gore and stuff, like fit in really well. Like it wasn't like really sudden. Like, it made sense. Yeah, I really liked how the seriousness of the environments stood out against how goofy the characters are. Yeah, like, all of the characters are really, really silly. Yeah. And, like, the situation that they're put in is so serious that it's it just makes them seem even funnier. And I think one of the things to touch on that adds to the goofiness is especially the animation. They're very cartoony, and they're also well done. They're very smooth. And one of my favorite things to see in the game was not just the environments and all, 
but also seeing the animations as well. I, <laughs> all of the animations were really good. It was really, it was just really good uh, graphics wise. Uh, I did, my computer did crash the first time I opened the game, but um, I was able to change the graphics before the game opened and I just selected the wrong one. So it was definitely on me. Um, so the second time I opened it, I just picked lower graphics and it worked fine. And it didn't look any worse to me, really, but it did crash my computer, so. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what were your thoughts on the writing of the game? I thought all of the dialogue was really, really funny. Um, I really enjoyed, like, the narrator's dialogue a lot. Some of it contradicted what... <laughs> what uh, Detective Murphy said, and it was kind of funny because it was like his inner monologue was not the same as him, really. Yeah, his dialogue was actually my favorite, especially because, like how I said before, the sentences, they're, they're pretty goofy, but with the narrator's voice, it's got a, such a melodramatic feel. Like, I never thought I'd hear the words lol, dank, or memes. Like, in years, it's been years since I heard some of those words. But I hear that dude say something like, my dank trench coat. And that took me aback so much and I, st I couldn't stop laughing. I like the, the meme, like computer specifically for memes. That was oh, really yes. funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then also like how his drawers were glued shut and stuff like that. Like the little details were really funny. Oh yeah, there was so much writing that went into basically the world building of this game, especially with the office and especially with the uh, city as well, which is really fun. Yeah, you get to learn a lot about Detective Murphy, like in the very beginning of the game, how he he doesn't pay his assistant, stuff like that. How that leads him to almost dying, which is actually a pretty fun story plot device. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's so chill and adamant about it too, like, oh, I still ref I'm still not gonna pay her. <laughs> yeah. I think the hilarious writing, especially the way that it'll then tie into the environment, would be my favorite part of this game. How about you? I think it's probably the same for me. I think I liked Juice the best, probably. But it was it was just really funny dialogue. Like all of all of the writing was really really funny and really really good. Yeah, this would be like a top tier comedy game in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Are there any gripes you have this, with this game? Uh, other than being slightly confused on where to like find things sometimes, uh, there was really nothing that I didn't like. Uh, it was really fun and super funny. So like, even when I was confused, I didn't really care that much because I was like, this is a fun game. Yeah, I find it really fun. That's why I actually wish it could have been longer. I think that's my, it's not necessarily like a developmental issue with this game. It's just that with this short length, I ended up feeling disappointed when I finished the game because I really wanted to continue adventuring with Detective Murphy. Yeah, it was short, but I also, I kind of liked that it was short because I was like, kind of losing attention by the end but mm. i don't know i think maybe if there was like a second game or something like that maybe not make the game longer but have like a continuation yeah i agree with the way that the characters and the story are written this would actually make for a great series would you recommend the game i would recommend the game um i would recommend it for pretty much anyone it, it's really funny it's pretty short uh and there's technically a mystery <laughs> so I yeah I would recommend the game I do too although the game is short and to be honest it's really not challenging in the slightest it still brings a lot of humor and cool imagery to make up for it and if you're someone who's honestly not that good at mystery games it's a good starting point since the puzzles are pretty easy but on the flip side if you want a challenge you're not really gonna find one at all although the game's short length heavy use of comedy and low difficulty kind of give the sense that it's probably not even meant to be a challenge anyway. So it's still good fun without that much of a struggle. And with all that in mind, I rate it a 7 out of 10. I rated it a 8.5 out of 10. That's going to bring us to a total of 7.75 out of 10 for Murderside 2017. Great job, Powerhoof. Before we end, we've got a special announcement that most of y'all probably saw in the description already. It's Joyce's birthday, or at least the day that this episode comes out. So, wish her a happy birthday. It's not even my birthday. It's not even my birthday yet. 
Well, it's like the day before. It's close enough. And uh, bother her. Go bother her. Do it. Do it right now. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Please. We have, we have Instagram. We have the YouTube comments. We have Twitter. Go and do it right now. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on this episode of Indie House. Be sure to rate the episode and let us know your thoughts. Also, if you have any indie game suggestions, feel free to comment below or hit us up at IndieHouse underscore pod on Twitter or Instagram. That is also where you can go to go and bother Joycelyn about her birthday. Say happy birthday. Do it. You gotta do it. <laughs> no. Catch us next week on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. See y'all on the next level. Bye.